Hi guys, it's Ramon Goose and this is Coffee Chat. Let's have a swig of our coffee. Okay, here we go. It's got a really nice mug of coffee today. Great. Okay, so I didn't really want to, um, guys, I didn't really want to go um, too much into the uh, coronavirus thing, but let me just read you this uh, headline. Gibson Guitar Forces is factory workers in Nashville to work during COVID-19. So this is a report that I've seen today, guys, and I'll put the link in the description section. But let's just have a look at this. I'm going to quote from this website. Nashville-based Gibson Guitars last week ordered its headquarters employees to work from home to prevent the spread of COVID-19 or COVID-19. However, out at its factory on Old Masson Drive in Nashville, over 300 blue-collar factory workers are being forced to come into Gibson's factory to build guitars. The temperature in the plant is 80 degrees with 50 to 60% humidity, which is really not good if you are trying to keep the virus down, says Mel, a Gibson guitar worker who declined to give their name out for fear of retaliation. Workers at the plant say it's impossible to maintain six feet of social distance in the plant. Likewise, many workers haven't been given protective gloves or masks. On the assembly line, we are working closely together. We all touch guitars, says Mel. There is one turnstile in the plant at Gibson and twice a day more than 300 workers try to exit the plant through the same turnstile. Likewise, all the workers use the same time clock to check in, a dangerous vector point for COVID-19. This report also goes on to say that a local food truck is actually too scared to deliver food there anymore um, for fear of um, getting COVID. Apparently, the workers have been told by Gibson management that they've got to continue working until there is a positive case of COVID amongst the workers. This, uh, this Gibson employee who goes under the name of Mel also goes on to say, um, I realise they've got a lot of back orders, but they are putting a lot of people at risk. There is a lot of people at this plant um, who are older and they're 50 years and above who have been there for many years and they are more at risk than the obviously the younger people. Workers estimate that approximately 30% of the workforce is over the age of 50, making them at great risk of contracting COVID-19. The report goes on to say that um, Gibson Guitar has long had a reputation of being a hard-nosed employee. In 1985, Gibson Guitars famously closed its unionised factory at Kalamazoo at a non-union in Nashville. The shop has remained non-union up to date, leaving many workers at the mercy of their employees as the pandemic strikes Nashville. So guys, I don't know what you think about that report, but um, if it's true or not, um, I'll put the link in the description. Maybe check it out. I think that um, if it is true, then I think Gibson and Fender really need to uh, set an example here because they are making you know, a lot of money. They've got a big turnover and uh, they really need to set an example in the uh, guitar industry. Be interesting to know if other companies also have stopped their production. I mean, I've seen on Facebook that a lot, a lot of smaller companies I personally know here in England um, and uh, in the UK have uh, stopped you know, accepting um, customers at their workshops and instead they're doing it via email and uh, so forth. But they're kind of only small companies where maybe they only have one employee. And um, they've also said that if they have more employees, they're gonna sort of make everyone work from home. So you would have thought that Gibson would have actually been doing this themselves. Another thing I wanted to talk about in this um, coffee chat is some really crazy prices for some um, relict and signature guitars that I've seen from Fender and Gibson and uh, it, for me it's getting to a point now where it's getting so crazy that um, these custom shop versions of guitars they're copying from say the 60s or even I don't know if they're copying from the 70s but they're actually more expensive now than the guitars they're, that they're actually copying which is getting really stupid also, you're seeing some signature guitars go for like £30,000 um, here in England. I've seen some shops, I'm not going to mention any names, but there was one kind of signature Gibson guitar. I think it was up at 30000 quid. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, why are you going to spend that much money on basically a copy of something? You know, I can understand somebody spending £30,000 on something that's got the providence, you know, the history behind it and photographs and videos of on YouTube of the guy playing it back in you know, the 70s or the 60s, but for a new guitar, you know, um, and like I said, I don't want to sort of put any, you know, shop names or any sort of guitars, you know, and let you know that I can do if you want, but I think it's better I don't. Um, but just say, you know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. These prices are getting sky high. And I think now with this situation where the economies, uh, we're really not sure about the economy, it's really good to take stock and, and finish this madness, okay? And this really sort of, uh, I really started seeing this sort of trend with when they did the Steve Ray Vaughan replicas. John Cruz made about 100 of them, or I think, or maybe less, 20, I don't know, I can't remember. 
um, and they were just basically a custom shop guitar, muscle built guitar, <clears throat> and all they had was the the uh, Fender Gold um, Shallot Elite tuners on them. They had a gold reverse trim, and and now you see them going for fifty thousand pounds, and it's like absolutely um, ridiculous because that guitar is not anything special, you know. Well, I mean, it's as special as in it was made by John Cruise, but you know, a John Cruise guitar is what worth five thousand quid. 6,000 quid it's a master built Fender guitar but to shoot up to 50,000 pounds just because it's a replica of a, a Sivre Vaughan guitar is you know the mind boggles uh, the stupidity of somebody that's going to pay that amount of money um, you know I certainly would have no respect for anybody that would pay $50,000 for a replica of a Sivre Vaughan Sivre Vaughan's number one guitar you can build one um, I, in fact I built one myself you can check out my videos you can build one yourself for a thousand pound or 2000 quid you know and you can even get the fender elite gold proper tuners that um c rev on use because i know it's on the they've got a new run of these guitars that i think maybe john cruise has been involved with and they haven't even used the proper tuners so you're buying a guitar with the incorrect tuners but apparently it's a replica of a c rev on guitar so you know this is getting really crazy now um and i just wanted to say especially in this sort of time um let's take stock and let's be realistic guys and let's stop this madness of, of buying these ridiculously expensive guitars when all they are are, you know, two planks of wood stuck together. Let's face it, I mean, Fender guitar, when they first built the guitars, Leo Fender, the whole idea was you didn't even have to refret it. You just unbolted the neck and put a new neck on. It was a cheap guitar. It was cheaply made. The whole reason for a Fender Stratocaster was so it could be cheaply made on the assembly line. Gibsons are a bit more ornate because they're glued in. They've got some ornate sort of trapeze block markers and so forth and they've carved so they're a little bit more um, involved but the fender guitars especially they're very you know they're cheap guitars to make that's how leo fender designed it so for these guitars now to have replicas which are worth fifty thousand dollars because they're a replica of somebody's famous guitar i mean come on guys let's let's stop this madness and get back to reality you know are these musicians that are buying these guitars and going out gigging with them no i don't think so these are probably you know, people with more money than cents, they probably don't even play these guitars. So that's that's uh, something that has sort of been bothering me for a while. We might go a bit more into this on some future coffee chats, but for now, that's it for today. A little bit of a rant about a couple of things. Guys, stay safe, as in my previous uh, coffee chat. We need to eat well and look after ourselves. And uh, God bless. Speak soon. Take care.